Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're studying the Gospel of Matthew, and we're in chapter 15 today. Last time, I took nearly 10 good minutes, which I did, which I do um, uh, at times, and uh, Mel Hurley has said to me, why don't you just rename this Some Good Minutes? And I said, no, 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 that would be giving in. But I guess what I have done is just give up and take whatever amount of minutes I need. Hopefully, I'll give you some of those minutes back, or at least keep it to around five today. We're going to read verses one through nine. Um, th this is really in the middle of the event. Pharisees come and make a complaint. Jesus answers them, and then he has something more, uh, to say to the crowds to apply what he's been saying to the Pharisees. Some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem, saying, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders, for they do not wash their hands when they eat bread? Um, these are from Jerusalem, so they've had to travel. Jesus is still in Galilee. Um, is this complaint honest? Do they hope that they can just refine Jesus' position and get him more in line with their thoughts? I think so. Um, these are not just Pharisees, but scribes, not just the mostly the businessmen and middle-class types who were part of this uh, ultra-conservative um, group, uh, for lack of a better term, and I know that's a terrible uh, term to use, but I don't have a better one, that were the Pharisees, but these are professional scribes, people who were experts in the law. I think it's also amazing to notice that, that their question said they were not transgressing the law, but the traditions of the elders. So they are accusing them of not following the traditions of the elders. Now those traditions were given as a hedge around the law to protect the law. The thought was, we have 613 laws. How are we going to keep them? We're going to make more laws so that if we keep those laws, we'll be sure we won't violate the other ones. When they'd wash their hands, they would have two decanters of that were cleansed of water they would you'd hold your hand up like this and you take one decanter and you pour water over it and then you couldn't use that decanter again because you just touched it with a dirty hand so it was now defiled so now you take the clean hand grab the other decanter hold your hand up pour the water over it and then dry your hands and you were clean it's not really scrubbing your hands is it but it was more about the, uh, the tradition, the, the, the act itself. Jesus is going to reject their entire hermeneutic, their entire way of using scripture and of using reason. He answered them and said, Why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? God says, Honor your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever shall say to his father or mother, anything of mine you, have, you might have been helped with has been given to God. He is not to honor his father or his mother. And thus you invalidate the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as their doctrine the precepts of men. He did not in any way answer their question because it is irrelevant, because it is not about the word of God. It's about the traditions of human beings. And he does not answer it in any way. What he points out is their way of using tradition, reason, scripture, has given them license they have given themselves license to disobey the word itself the clearly communicated commands of god and, and he's going to apply this with the crowd soon jesus rejects the whole process the litigious lawyerly process of taking a thought here and a verse there and a notion here and putting them together and saying, if this is true, then that is true, then that is true, then this is true. Therefore, we must do this. That is not the way you use Scripture. That's not the way God communicated Scripture. He said something very simple. You honor your father and your mother. You take care of them. 
And Jesus said, I don't care how cleverly you found a way not to take care of them. If you don't, you haven't, and you've disobeyed the law, no matter whether or not you think you have reasoned yourself into a correct position. And in the process, he's telling us to reject any use of scripture that way. Anybody that takes 12 or 14 or 50 pages to come to a conclusion from the word has used the word improperly because the things that pertain to life and godliness are given to us. They're given to us. That's what Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. They weren't given to us to puzzle out. They were given to us. God communicates them clearly to us. Repent and be baptized. Thou shalt not lie. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, love your enemies and pray for them. We can reason our way out of those things, but they're still true. And we can write volumes trying to explain how they don't apply, but they do. Because that which God expects of us, he communicates to us clearly. And that's the way we use scripture. Okay. We'll talk more about this next time as Jesus supplies it more broadly. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.